Hello everyone. Today I'll be doing a quick tutorial video on how to use the NMI deck to measure the voltage across and current through two resistors in series and two resistors in parallel. So first I want to start off by um, just going over some basics about the breadboard that we're going to be using. So uh, with the way that I have my breadboard oriented right here, you'll see that we have some holes um, going down vertically like this next to the uh, red plus sign and also next to the um, blue minus sign. So basically these holes are all connected vertically. So let's say I had a wire that was connected to a 5 volt power supply and I took that wire and I just plugged it into or I connected it onto one of these holes here. Then all of these holes vertically would have 5 volts um, going through them. Similarly, if I had another wire connected to ground and I put it on the um, vertical line of holes next to the blue minus sign, then there would be ground um, throughout all of these holes. What's a little bit different is that when you go to the middle of the breadboard, um, the holes on the middle of the breadboard are not connected vertically, but instead they're connected horizontally. So like a row of holes are connected. So if I was to take that same wire that had like 5 volts going through it and I put it on this hole right here, then this whole row of holes would have 5 volts, not this whole column. So that's the difference between, you know, the middle of the breadboard and the sides that have the um, plus and minus sign. This notch in the middle of the breadboard pretty much separates the two, or pretty much separates the uh, breadboard into two. So, again, the holes in the middle of the breadboard are connected horizontally, like in a row, but it doesn't um, continue across the notch. So this row and this row are completely separate. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And uh, pretty much the separation of the breadboard is helpful in the event that, let's say, the project you're building requires two sources. You can have, like, 5 volts on this side and 15 volts here and it's made possible because of this notch and pretty much you can see that you know this right side and this left side you know they wouldn't be connected otherwise there would be a connection going through the middle of the, the breadboard in any case that's pretty much just the basic things that you would need to know about the breadboard like how things are able to be connected for this experiment in particular and maybe even in general. So the next thing I want to do is uh, talk a little bit about the uh, NIMI deck. So I have my NIMI deck right here. Uh, when you got your lab kit, these blocks of pins with like a little screw on top may have been connected already or maybe not. Um, but what you would do is you would basically, you know, just take this block in your lab kit and just line it up with the pins and give it a little push and they would be connected onto there. And what this little block allows you to do is to be able to connect wires to the MyDeck. So looking at the MyDeck, we see that there's um, some labels at the top. So this is AO, AI, and DIO. So from this side, it would be digital input and output. This AI is analog input. And this AO is um, analog output. Um, so depending on the kind of project that you would be using um, would determine which pins you need to use. Like let's say you needed to use the function generator or the oscilloscope. Um, you would definitely be using the AO and AI channels here. Or pins uh, more specifically. Uh, one thing I probably should have mentioned in the beginning of this video is that you're going to be needing to download this program called NI Elvis MX. Uh, if you just typed in Google, NI Elvis MX, um, it's a, a free program that you can download. You know, you don't need a serial number or anything like that. And it was pretty quick to install too. Um, but that program is necessary to use the various functions of the NI My Deck, like the oscilloscope, the function generator. Um, the digital multimeter that we're going to be using here in this lab. So you would definitely 
need to have that program downloaded to follow along uh, with the experiment. Um, aside from the pins here, when you turn it, um, where you would, if you look at the bottom of the NMI deck, you see these three holes. So there's uh, two red and one black. So what you would need to use, or what you would plug into um, these holes, would be the banana plugs that came with the lab kit, uh, and they look like these. So you can probably already tell that these are the ones that go into the my deck. And the other end with the prongs are going to be what you are going to be touching the um, circuit component with. Like, let's say if I wanted to measure the voltage across a resistor, I need to touch the resistor with these prongs. So at the bottom of the my deck, you'll see that there are, um, again, two red holes and one black hole. So the black banana plug, you know, there's only one place to put it. It's going to go in the middle of the my deck. Um, and these banana plugs are pretty much, as far as I know, only really used to, you, for the uh, digital multimeter function of the MyDeck. Like if you need to use the digital multimeter, you'll be needing these plugs for sure. So if you're going to be measuring voltage or you need to measure the resistance of a resistor, like let's say you didn't know your color codes and you wanted to measure the resistance so you can tell, oh, you know. Is it a 1K or 2K ohm resistor? You would need to put the banana plug on this left hole right here. And you can see that there's this um, capital V and omega sign that tells you, okay, this is the side that you want to use um, for if you want to um, measure any of those. Similarly, on the right side, if you want to measure current, you're going to put it on the right side of the right red hole. And you can also tell by this A right here, which is for amps. Um, so pretty much, you know, if you ever forget which side to put, you can always refer back to those uh, symbols at the top. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going, I'm going to uh, plug in the NMI deck to my laptop using the USB. And uh, if you see on my screen, um, you're probably going to get this little window that pops up. I personally have never uh, really clicked on anything here, so I wouldn't know what any of these do. Um, but I already had the NI Elvis MX um, program launched, um, so I really have no use for this little one that popped up. So I'm going to start uh, building the circuit now, and I'm going to start with um, the two resistors in series. And for my source, I'm going to want to use a, for my source, I'm going to want to use a um, 5 volt DC source. So there's uh, two ways to get the 5 volts um, DC. In general, there's a couple ways to get a DC voltage source from the MyDAC. So on the very right hand side, the very last pin, it has a 5 volts. Um, if you wanted 15 volts, there's two left pins on the side that has plus 15, minus 15 there. There's another way to get um, various uh, DC voltage voltages um, using the analog output channel 0 or 1. So if I go on my NI Elvis um, program, there's going to be a instrument called the DC level. And you can see when it pops up, um, the device was already selected because I had my, my deck um, connected, so it already registered it. For the channel settings, you can either choose channel analog output um, 0 or analog output 1, whichever one you want to use. And you can set whatever voltage you want in this box right here. You can choose the up and down arrow or just type it in. So let's say I wanted 10 volts, hit enter. Then from channel log output... Um, Analog, sorry, channel, analog output zero um, on this pin right here would have uh, DC, 10 volts DC coming through it. Um, but since I want to just get 5 volts, like a 5 volt power supply for this experiment, I'm just going to simply use the uh, pin on the very right hand side of the device for this 5 volts. So it's really up to you on your preference on 
you know what wire what color wire you want to use and you can really use any wire um, but for me I like to use a red wire for my source and black wire for ground so if I could try and connect my wire you'll see that it's pretty loose like I can just yank it out right away it doesn't stay and that's where the screwdriver that comes with your lab kit um, comes in handy so what you have to do is you have to insert your wire into the hole where um, you know the pin that you need to use is and you're gonna take the screwdriver and tighten it on top and now if I try and yank the wire out you can see that okay it's not gonna come out anymore so that's where I want my 5 volt 5 volts supply to come through and then next to it there's a digital ground pin so I'm gonna connect my black wire through there and similarly I'm going to tighten at the top okay so now I'm going to get my two um, resistors and the two resistors I want to use are um, two one kilo ohm resistors so I have them right here uh, you can tell that they're 1k ohm resistors because the color code is brown black red or let's say if you didn't know what it was you can also use the digital multimeter in the my deck or if you have a separate digital multimeter you can also measure it through there um, but again the color code is brown black red so I know these are 1k ohm resistors so first when I build my circuit I like to start off by connecting my sources and ground onto the breadboard. So typically we connect our sources where the uh, on the line of holes with next to the red plus sign and ground on the line of holes next to the uh, blue minus sign. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna do just that and I'm just gonna just connect them up here on the top arbitrarily. Like so. Okay. So now there is five volts going through um, this whole line horizontally and same thing um, right here on next to the blue minus sign there's going to be that's connected to ground. So before I actually build the circuit I think I want to verify that I am actually getting um, five volts through it. So I'm going to connect um, my banana plugs on to my my deck so because I'm going to be measuring voltage I'm going to put my red wire on the left side on the left um, red hole and then the black one obviously goes in the middle and now I have my two prongs right here so for me personally, I find it really easy and convenient to perform experiments when I have alligator clips. So I have a red and black, red and black um, alligator clip. So I like to connect the red one to the red prong and then the black alligator clip to the black prong. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take two wires and I'm going to connect them onto the breadboard where my source is. So I'm going to use this orange wire to go where the 5 volts is and this blue wire for where ground is. Now I'm going to open up the digital multimeter on um, NIL bus. And when the window pops up, I'm going to make sure I select the green V on the very left side that one is to measure DC voltage and I'm just going to specify the range to let's say 20 volts um, but if you know what your expected range is going to be you can select whatever range you want so uh, in order for the multimeter to work you need to hit run and I'm going to then press run okay but it's not reading anything because I haven't connected the ends of my alligator clips to anything. So what I want to do now is I want to take my red alligator clip and I'm going to connect it to this orange wire like so. 
and then I'm going to take my black alligator clip and connect it to the blue wire okay and you can see that on the digital multimeter it's fluctuating between uh, 4.96 volts to 4.98 volts so not exactly 5 volts but you know close enough and you can see that we definitely are getting uh, you know some voltage from the MyDAC okay and that's something that you probably want to do um, every time you do an experiment you know is to check your sources make sure you're actually getting what you want from that source so after disconnecting my alligator clips to those wires I'm just going to take them off um, but I'm gonna leave them on the side because we're gonna need it anyways later so now what I want to do is I'm going to take my two 1k ohm resistors and I want to put them in series so I'm just going to take my first resistor and these aren't polarized so it doesn't really matter you know which way you put it I'm just going to randomly put it right here on this side of my breadboard okay so what's one thing that we know about uh, resistors in series we know that they share one node and only one so I want the node so you can think of these holes as like a node right so I want the node that this that these two resistors share I want it to be this node right here where the right lead of this resistor goes so in order to do so I'm going to connect the left lead of this resistor onto that same row of holes like so because this row or I guess with the way that I have a um, I guess with the way that I have my breadboard oriented you would call this a column um, but you know this line of holes is one node so by connecting this lead of this resistor and this lead of this resistor onto this column of holes that they are sharing one node okay so the way I want to orient my or you know construct my circuit is that I want five volts coming into this lead and then you know these two resistors are connected and I want ground to be connected to this lead of this resistor okay so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this um, orange wire and I'm going to connect it onto the row in this case row of holes that is next to the plus um, the red plus sign now there are five volts going through this orange wire what I'm going to do now is connect it to the node where the left side, the left lead of this resistor is, like so. So it is on the same node or column of holes on this left lead of this first resistor. Now this lead of this resistor needs to be connected to ground. So I'm going to take my blue wire. Now I'm going to put this on the same row of holes that's connected to ground. I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to connect it to the same node or column of holes that the right lead of this resistor is connected to. And now this circuit is closed, like the loop is closed. Now a current can complete its loop, like there's no open part of this circuit. And you know, contrary to how we see the uh, schematics in, you know, in class like in 240, 340 uh, whatever class really you'll see that there's like the circle and the plus and minus and on the minus side of the uh, voltage source it's connected to ground um, we don't need to do that here because internally the the source in the my deck it's internally connected to ground so that's why the loop is already closed and and yeah so we don't need to worry about okay well what about the wire that goes to the source like no it's, it's already accounted for okay now what I want to do is I want to measure the voltage across first this resistor so we already know and we already checked that we are getting 5 volts from the my deck 
So I think we're pretty much good to go on doing the measurements. So I still have my, um, I still have my digital multimeter up from the NI Elvis, right? I still have my banana plugs connected in the right place. So I am good to go to measuring um, my voltage. So if we remember that when you need to measure voltage, you would place a voltmeter in parallel to the resistor. So the way to do that is to simply connect one, I guess because I'm using an alligator clip, I'm going to connect one alligator clip to one lead of the resistor and the other alligator clip to the other lead of the resistor, like so. So this is putting the voltmeter in parallel to the resistor. Now if I'm looking at my digital multimeter that I had up from the NI Elvis, I see that I'm reading 2.41 volts or fluctuating between 2.41 to 2.39. Okay, so now let's think, you know, does that make sense? I have 5 volts power supply and I have 2 resistors in series. Okay, so if I was to do, um, you know, some, some math using voltage division, I did do some of that on, on my calculations on the side. So I calculated that I should be getting 2.5 volts through this resistor. And what I'm reading is 2.41 volts. So that's pretty close. I mean, um, as far as why it's not exact, you know, these are real life components. This is a real life experiment. Um, I guess the best thing that I can say is that, um, you know, these things don't ever really give you perfect measurements. You know, there's other things to account for. Like, these wires themselves have resistance too. You know, so things like that, you know, you won't really be getting, you know, your true expected theoretical value that you calculated, but what we're getting is close enough. So that's a good sign, right? So notice that I put my red alligator clip on the left side of this resistor and my black alligator clip on the right side of this resistor because I know on this side I had my 5 volts connected to it and on this side it was just connected to the other resistor. So let's say I switch it around. You can also think of it like this resistor, it's like if you were to polarize it, it would be plus and minus. So let's see if I was to then switch the alligator clips around and I was to measure it um, technically backwards. I would see on my multimeter that now I'm getting negative 2.41 volts. So we were expecting a positive voltage, but now we're getting a negative one. So that's one indication of that you have your um, probes or your alligator clips um, backwards. Unless you're expecting that, okay, the voltage that you should be getting is negative. But in this case, it was expected to be positive. So just switching around the clips would do the job. Okay. So I measured the current, I mean the voltage through this resistor. Now I want to do the same for the second resistor. And because they're both 1K resistors, I'm going to expect that this resistor is also going to have roughly 2.5 volts going through it. So taking my alligator clips, I'm going to put my uh red alligator clip on the left side or the left lead of this second resistor and my black alligator clip on the right lead or right side of this resistor. And again, looking at my digital multimeter on my computer, I do get 2.39 to 2.41 volts a measurement. So again, not exactly 2.5, but you know, it's really close. So I would say that, okay, like we successfully measured the voltage across these resistors, right? So that's how we measure voltage. Um, again, the voltmeter from the digital multimeter, or I guess you would just say the digital multimeter itself has to be put in parallel to the resistor. So that's going to be different when it comes to measuring current, right? So we know that when you measure current, across a, a resistor, 
you need to insert the ammeter in series with the component or yeah like in, in series with the component or in the circuit so the way we measure the current is going to be really different than how we measure the voltage and this is really important because if you accidentally measure current the same way you measured voltage it could really um, mess up your device so it's really important to, me to make sure that we are uh, measuring these things correctly so because I want to measure current this time I first need to change the um, banana plugs on my MyDAC by switching the red plug from the left red hole to the right red hole because remember as we saw the symbol on the on top of the right red hole was an A and that stands for amps okay so now we're ready to go with the MyDAC itself um, I'm going to go on my NILVIS program and um, when I opened up the NI Elvis, uh, it was automatically set up to the uh, to measure DC voltage because it was um, it selected the far left V with the straight line, so that's for DC voltage. And now I want to measure a DC current. So in order to do that, I'm going to select this blue A that also has the um, straight line next to it. Another thing you'll notice is that there's this little picture right here that shows the banana jack connections and it tells you where exactly you should be putting those plugs in when you're doing this measurement. So that's really handy in case, you again, you forget where, where everything goes. Okay, and so I did preliminary calculations, um, again, before performing this experiment. I expected that my current is going to be measured in the milliamp range. So I want to change the range on my digital multimeter to the, the lowest, which is the 20 milliamp range. So definitely when I do my measurement, I should be getting, um, I should be seeing it in, mil, in the milliamp unit, right? Okay. So again, like I said before, measuring current through a, a resistor is going to be really different than how we measured voltage. So... The way to do it is that you have to break the circuit and insert your ammeter in series with the component. So again, um, I'm going to break the circuit by, I'm going to disconnect this orange wire. So now, now the loop is not closed anymore on my circuit. On, now it's open, right? There's no connection, there's no current, but we lost our source. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, red alligator clip and I'm going to connect it onto this orange wire that I just disconnected, right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the left lead of this resistor and I'm going to disconnect it from the breadboard. So I'm going to take it out of the hole, but I'm not going to disconnect the right side. I'm going to leave that as is. And I'm also going to leave every other connection alone. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the black alligator clip and connect it to that lead of the resistor that I just disconnected. Okay. Now the circuit is closed again because everything is connected. I inserted my ammeter in between, you know, my source and my resistor. And now we should be getting a measurement, right? So if I do look at my digital multimeter on my computer, I do get a reading of 2.43 milliamp. So on my you know calculations that I did beforehand, I calculated that I should be getting 2.5 milliamps. So 2.43 is not too bad. Similarly to how when we measured voltage, it wasn't exactly 2.5. Um, we know it's close enough. You know, we are getting a measurement. And you know, because we're getting a measurement and that it was close to what we expected, you know, we can say that, okay, we did our measurement correctly. So, but that's just the current through this resistor, right? So I wanna perform a similar, um, I guess, procedure on measuring the current through this second resistor, right? And one thing to note is that, okay, so we know that resistors in series, they should have the same current going through them. 
So when we measure the current through this second resistor, we should also expect it to be around 2.43 milliamps. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect my alligator clips and I'm going to reconstruct my circuit to how it was before I tried to measure the current. So pretty much putting it back to normal, like so. Now, there's pretty much different ways to measure the current through um, this second resistor. I can break the circuit by disconnecting this wire to ground and uh, lifting up this lead of this resistor here, or I can disconnect both leads of these resistors that share that they're sharing the node and uh, measure the current through there. So I think I'm going to do it this way. So what I want to do is I'm going to break the circuit again. I'm going to break the circuit by lifting up the right lead of this first resistor. And then I'm going to disconnect the left lead of the second resistor. I'm going to lift it up. Okay, so now the circuit again is not connected. And I'm going to insert my ammeter. And I forgot to mention, but if you notice the way that I had um, connected my banana, my alligator clips was that I had the red banana, uh, red alligator clip connected to my source first and then to the resistor. So that would be like if, if I'm expecting the current going this way from the source to the resistor. And that's pretty much what we would expect, right? So I expect that the current would be going from this right lead of this first resistor to the sec to the left lead of the second resistor, like going this way. So I'm going to connect my alligator clip to my red alligator clip to the right lead of this resistor and I'm connecting my black alligator clip to the left lead of the second resistor. Okay, again that's because I think or I'm assuming that or that I know that the current is going this way like from the source to this resistor to this one to ground. Okay, so looking at my digital multimeter again I do see that I am measuring 2.43 milliamps. And I, if you remember when we measured the current through the first resistor on the left, we also got 2.43 milliamps. And you know, that's exactly what we would expect because since these resistors are in series, they would have the same current going through them. Okay. So that is pretty much how you measure um, voltage across and current through two resistors in series. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these resistors in parallel now. So I'm going to disconnect my orange and blue wire and I'm going to just disconnect my um, resistors too. Okay, so I'm just going to place one resistor here arbitrarily in the middle of my breadboard, right? And what do we know about resistors in parallel? Well, we know that they share two nodes, right? So I'm going to connect the second wire, I mean the second resistor, such that it shares two nodes of the first resistor. So I'm going to connect it to the same node as the left side of this resistor, the left lead. And I'm going to connect this to the uh, same node as the right lead of this resistor. Okay, this is one node and this is one node. So these resistors are in parallel, right? So I want, you know, 5 volts coming from this node going through these resistors and I want ground to be connected here. So I'm going to connect ground, I'm oh, sorry, I'm going to connect my 5 volts to this node, this column of holes. So there's 5 volts going through this left lead of this resistor and same for um, on the bottom resistor, uh, 5 volts going through here. Now I'm going to take my blue wire and I'm going to connect 
these uh, this node to ground. Okay. So now my two resistors are in parallel. You know, they share one node that has five volts, and then they share another node that has ground. So now my resistors are in parallel. So what I want to do is go back to measuring the voltage across these resistors. On my multimeter, I'm going to go back and select the green V with the straight line on the far left. So now I'm going to be measuring voltage. But before I do any measurements, I have to make sure that I put my uh, banana plugs in the right place. So I'm going to take the uh, left, I mean, sorry, the red banana plug from the right red hole. I'm going to put it back on the left red hole, like so. Okay, now we're ready to go to measure um, voltage. And I can see that the range, it's automatically set up to 60 volts. Um, I think I can just go ahead and leave it. I think it'll be fine. Or I can go back and change it to 20 volts um, if I want to. So, you know, let's see what we get. So based on the calculations that I did earlier, I expect that across these resistors, I should both be getting 5 volts. So, again, we need to insert the voltmeter in parallel to these resistors. So I'm going to take the left or the red alligator clip and connect it to the left lead of this top resistor or the first resistor. And then on the black alligator clip, I'm, gonna, I'm going to connect it on the other side. Okay, so based on my um, calculations that I did on the side, I expected that I would be getting 5 volts across this resistor. Why? Because we would have 5 volts here and 0 volts here. So the voltage across this top resistor would be 5 minus 0. So I'd expect to get 5 volts. But on my digital multimeter, what I'm reading is 4.75 volts. Okay. So, you know, again, not perfect, like when we did the measurements in series, but, you know, close enough. Okay. So now I'm going to measure the voltage across the second resistor on the bottom. Because these two resistors are in parallel, I would expect that the voltage measured would be exactly the same as the top resistor. So let's go and see if that's the case. I'm going to um, switch my alligator clips to now measuring the voltage across the second resistor on the bottom. Okay? And again, on my digital multimeter, I read 4.75 volts, which is exactly the same measurement that we got for the first or top resistor, which proves again that we know the voltage across two resistors in parallel is going to be the same. And that's exactly what we're reading here. Now what I want to do is I want to measure the um, current through these resistors. So first I'm going to disconnect my alligator clips. I'm going to go on my NAL of the software. I'm going to switch it to reading AC current, which is the blue A again with the um, with a straight line. And based on my preliminary calculations, again, I expect that the current through these resistors will be in the milliamp range. So I'm going to change the range on um, the digital multimeter to the lowest 20 amps, 20 milliamps, sorry. And then finally, again, I need to change the uh, banana plugs on my, my deck and switch the um, red plug. Okay, now we're good to go to measuring um, current. So, again, I need to break the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the circuit by disconnecting this orange wire. And I'm going to uh, disconnect the left lead of the first or top resistor. So now I'm going to connect my red alligator clip 
to my wire that had my 5 volt source going through it because I'm expecting that my current is going to go from my source to ground. So that's why I did that. Um, and then I'm going to connect my black alligator clip to the um, disconnected lead of the first resistor. Okay. Now, based on my preliminary calculations, I expected that the current through this top resistor would be 5 milliamps. What I'm reading on my digital multimeter is around 4.82 milliamps. Okay, so again, not too bad, not exactly 5 milliamps, but you know, it's close to what we were expecting and it's positive, so we can say that okay, this was a successful measurement, it was done correctly. So that's just for the top resistor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the current through the second or bottom resistor. So I'm going to disconnect my black alligator clip from the top resistor. I'm going to put the circuit back to how it was before. And I'm just going to keep the um, red alligator clip on my orange wire because I know that this node was the same. It was both connected to 5 volts. So I would have to reconnect it anyways if I disconnected it. So now all I need to do while keeping this the same, keeping my red alligator clip to connected to the orange wire, I just need to disconnect the left lead of the second or bottom resistor. Again, breaking the circuit and then inserting the ammeter. So by connecting this black alligator clip to the left side of the bottom or second resistor, I'm inserting the ammeter. And similarly to the top resistor, I would expect that the current would also be 5 milliamps because you know if we take the two uh, resistors in parallel and I get the equivalent resistance I would measure that um, the uh, current equivalent I guess the current through the equivalent resistance would be uh, 10 milliamps right and so you know if you can imagine in a schematic drawn you would have 10 milliamps going to the node and then it's going to split between the two um, resistors. So if we would have 5 milliamps going to the first one and 5 milliamps going to the second one. And that's exactly what we're getting right here. So measuring the current through the second resistor, we are also getting 4.81 milliamps. We would expect it to be 5, but uh, 4.81 is you know pretty close. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much how you would measure um, voltage and current through these resistors in series and parallel. And um, pretty much not even just resistors. Um, I, believe, I believe it's the same uh, measuring through, uh, I think, any circuit component, really. Um, but you know, EC240... Um, you know, typically it's always measured across uh, resistors, so you'll be doing a lot of, um, if you are an EC240, you'll be doing a lot of um, experiments like this where you're going to be measuring across a resistor, uh, voltage across a resistor, current through resistor, things like that. Um, so these are pretty much general methods, and if you were able to follow um, through this video, I believe that you'll be in good shape to perform um, any other experiment. So thank you for watching.